guys, today we're going to be doing a tag video, which is something that I haven't done in a while and I've been meaning to film this for so long. Today I'm going to be doing the Bougie Beauty Guru Tag. You don't know how many times I tried to say that and I had to retake it because apparently I can't say Bougie Beauty Guru in one sentence because it's it's hard, okay? So that's the tag that we're going to be doing. This was created by the channel Agape Love Girl, which her name is Maria. I've been subscribed to her for a long time, so if you guys don't already know who Maria is, her channel will of course be linked down in the description box as well as her video. So today we are just going to be talking about like kind of our spending habits and the way we like to spend money. Disclaimer, I'm probably going to be a very bougie beauty girl. I'm so sorry, but let's just get into this. Question number one, would you rather buy one expensive slash luxury item or buy several items with the same amount of money? Now this would really depend on what kind of item we are talking about. Like if we are talking about an eyeshadow palette, oh, it's gonna be tough. But I would probably, honestly with most of these things, I would probably just go like mid-range. I tend to not really like drugstore products that much and I also don't buy a lot of luxury items. So I'm gonna say I fall very much in between. Like there are certain things that I don't want to buy like really expensive things of, which would be items that I use every single day. So like my brow products, my mascaras, even though I do buy the Bad Gala Bang all the time, but I always try to get it on sale and I stock up so that it doesn't get that expensive. But in general, like if it's like a staple item that I use all the time, I don't want to spend a lot of money on it. So I tend to go more like mid-range. Again, I don't buy like a lot of drugstore products because I've just had a lot of misses when it comes to drugstores. So I don't know, it just seems a bit risky for me a lot of the time to buy drugstore products when I don't know if I can really trust them. So I tend to just stay in like the mid-range for honestly most of my makeup. That's where I feel like probably 70% of like my makeup collection is, is like mid-range. Question number two, when it comes to beauty products, do you believe the phrase, you get what you pay for? <sighs> no, not necessarily, because I've tried a lot of like luxury products that just are not that good, but I've also tried a lot of really cheap products that just really suck, but then again, if they're cheap, like it's almost okay that they're bad, if you know what I mean. But I would say in general, absolutely not. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is just ColourPop. Like ColourPop is amazing. Like I like most of their products and they are so inexpensive. So like, no, not really. And I also think that a lot of like the really high-end brands are so marked up just because of like the name of the company or like the brand itself. And like, that's why the products are so expensive. It's not necessarily because like, they use expensive ingredients or because there's anything that's really special about the product or the way that the product is made. It's mostly just you're paying for the brand. So I definitely wouldn't say that you get what you pay for, but there's still certain products that are just going to perform a little bit better if you spend a little bit more money. But like in general, I would definitely say no to that. Question number three, what's the most expensive beauty item you've purchased with your own money? I'm like embarrassed to even say this because I actually bought one of the large Natasha Denona palettes. Uh, this was like the blue purple palette, I think it was called, and I don't even own it anymore. This was before I started my channel and I wanted to really test out some really good high-end eyeshadows. Don't ask me why I decided to go with that palette. I didn't even really know what my makeup preferences were back then. I don't want to talk about it, but Basically, I decided to depot that palette so I have most of the shades that I really like from that palette in like an empty Z palette and then I gave the rest of my shades to a friend because I didn't want to let it go to waste and I also know that some people have said Natasha Nona shadows just don't last that long. So like I said, I just didn't want to have them laying around so that is the most expensive palette or product that I have bought and I don't even have it in my collection, like fully in my collection. So yeah, I mean, do I regret that? I wouldn't do it again, but at the time I did actually get a lot of use out of that palette and I did really like that palette, but it's still not something that, you know, I miss necessarily and I definitely think that I could have spent that money better or elsewhere, but you know, shit happens. Question number four, are you willing to buy products at full price or do you usually wait for a sale or a discount code? I am very willing to buy things full price because I feel like most of the time when I buy something, it's for review purposes. And if I'm going to review something, I really want to get it as fast as possible. Now, when it comes to like other things like foundations and stuff that I don't really feature on my channel, of course, I don't mind waiting for a sale. Like I was saying with my mascara, like I always wait for a sale with my back gal bang because I know I can stock up. But for things that I really want to review, 
I do want to get it as fast as possible, so I always get it like the day it launches, which obviously you're never going to get anything on sale the day it launches. So most of the time I would say no, but if it is things that I've kind of been thinking about and stuff, sometimes I'll wait for a sale, sometimes I won't. It kind of depends like how far away the sale really is. Like if we're looking at like a two month span and it's something that I really, really want, I'll just go ahead and buy it. And I also don't really, I don't like the idea of buying something just because it's on sale, so I really try my best to not like go look on Sephora during the sale just to like find something to buy because it's on sale and I feel like if I want something badly enough, I should be willing to pay full price for it anyway, so I would honestly say most of the time I don't wait for a sale, but if I can find a discount code or an affiliate link or something like that, of course I will use it, but I'm not going to necessarily wait around for a sale. Question number five. Where do you shop for beauty products the most? Um, it depends what we're talking about. If we're talking about like base products and stuff, I would say mostly Sephora and Ulta uh, because they just have everything. You know, there's everything that I would want basically in those stores. When it comes to eyeshadows and stuff, I buy so many things from indie brands that I can't physically get in store. Like if I could get it in store, I would because I do prefer going to the store and seeing things and swatching things before I buy it. But when it comes to eyeshadows, usually I can only get them online and so that's what I do. And also because I do try to get my products as fast as I can, they usually don't launch in store before they launch online. So most of the time I get them online, sometimes from the you know retailers themselves, especially if it's indie brands, I will buy directly from their sites. Otherwise I will buy from Sephora or Ulta, just kind of depending on what it is that I need and want. I will admit though that because I have so many points at Sephora, which is embarrassing, because I know Ulta's system is so much better. I almost feel like I need to just kind of keep racking up everything at Sephora because I don't want to start from scratch at Ulta because I don't really buy a lot of stuff from Ulta. So I don't know. I feel like I feel like at this point I'm so committed to Sephora that I just want to keep spending my money there and waiting for them to improve their point system or their reward system, I should say. I'm sure they will in the future. At least I'm hoping so. I'm very patient. I can wait years to spend my points. They're not going to run away. As long as they'll stay there, we're good. I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to pray that they come out with something that's actually like rewarding you know what I mean but yeah um, I would say I mostly shop at Sephora or I buy from indie brands question number six how often do you get your nails and or hair done so let's start with nails I usually get my nails done every three weeks or so and I do get gel because my nails are so weak and I've just been doing this for so long I don't know if I mentioned to a lot of my new subscribers, but I used to be a professional poker player and I would travel around everywhere and like playing in uh, big tournaments. And so I always wanted to get my nails done or have them look good because I mean, people are gonna be looking at your nails when you're playing. So I got into the habit of getting like fake nails done all the time. And I probably started when I was 19, I wanna say, and I have basically had fake nails since then and I'm about to turn 31. So at this point, it's just a habit. It's just something that I feel comfortable with. It's just something that I feel like I need to do. And it just makes me feel good too. And it's also nice because they last so long and I'm lazy and I don't wanna get them done often. So I try to go as long as possible. And as you can see, this is what happened when I go too long because I'm missing a nail. But it's fine. I need to book a new appointment. It's fine. I'm not too fussed about it. I'm not going to cry because one of my nails fell off. It's fine. So as for my hair, um, it really depends. I want to say I go actually like change up or color my hair. I don't do my own hair. I've had a lot of questions about that, but my hair color is very dark. I don't know if you can see my roots here, but like this is my natural color. So I do have to bleach my hair a lot to be able to have, you know, fun colored hair like this. And I am just not willing to take that risk on my own because I don't know enough about bleaching and I really wouldn't recommend anybody to bleach their own hair unless they know what they are doing. So I do go get my hair done. Uh, bleach, usually I have to do my roots depending on if I'm going to change my color or not, but I would say between every 8 to 12 weeks probably. I can usually go like 3 months and not have it look crazy. It really just depends. It depends how my color is fading and stuff. At home, I will kind of refresh it on my own, but I do go to a salon and get my hair done and it's expensive, but it makes me feel really good. And so I feel like it's worth it. Like, I feel like most of the things that I spend money on are like either makeup or getting my hair and nails done. So I don't really feel too bad about it. Question number eight, which makeup brush brand is your favorite? Wow, this is not going to come as a surprise at all, but it's definitely my wrapper brushes, 
which I know they're not available. I have made a video with these. These are, wow, these are natural goat hair brushes that I was so lucky to get sent in PR. Uh, they wanted me to try out their prototypes before they were actually launching and their Kickstarter ended up doing amazing. Like I am so happy for them. They made so much money from that and I can't wait to see what they're going to come out with in uh, December when they do launch. I actually talked to the owner the other day and he said they were starting some kind of a program on their site now that you could sign up for and like order a brush and then if you review it you would get a gift card back with the amount of money that the brush costs so maybe go ahead and check out their site i don't know if that's like open yet or if it's available but i will link graffer's site down below so you can go check it out if you're interested i know a lot of you guys bought these brushes and are waiting for them to you know be made and shipped and all that and i i'm just so excited for all of you to try them because they are honestly fantastic now obviously they are very expensive so I guess you could say I'm a bit bougie when it comes to brushes, but I also really like a lot of my Morphe brushes and I mean it just depends It really depends like I care a lot more about the shape of my brushes than what my brushes actually feel like Because since I like very small brushes I feel like those kind of brushes tend to hold their shape pretty good anyway And they don't get too scratchy because there's not like a ton of hair on them I also really like Sigma brushes. I think the Sigma quality is outstanding. I just, I haven't found like my favorite shaped brushes from Sigma yet. I do have a couple now that I really like that I just got, but in general, I would like to try more brushes from Sigma, especially their face brushes, because they are honestly so good and I really do want to get more of those, but I have brushes from basically every single price range that you can think of, probably ranging from like a dollar a brush up to like 50. So I mean, I have a lot of brushes and I don't really discriminate. I feel like I go through all of them, but I definitely have my favorites and they are my wrapper brushes right now. Question number nine, high-end or drugstore mascara? <laughs> hmm. Need I say more? <laughs> Question number 10. Think of your favorite makeup brand. Is it drugstore, high-end, luxury, or indie? I can't just pick one brand because, again, it just depends on what kind of makeup product we are talking about. There is no single brand that has everything that I want that is my favorite, but in general, since eyeshadow is my true love, I'm definitely going to say indie brands, and I also don't want to just like mention brands because there are so many brands that I absolutely love and I wouldn't want to leave any of them out. So indie brands for sure has my heart and I'm sure they always will. You know, it's so much more fun to follow different indie brands because you know they're gonna come out with something cool. It's not like you're looking on trend mood and you see like KKW coming out with another neutral palette and then you see Tarte trying to be cool and coming out with something else with a pop of blue. It's like, it's so boring, but with indie brands, you never know what you're gonna get and I love that about it. Question number 11, this is the last one. So it says, considering your answers to these questions, do you think you're bougie? <laughs> Absolutely. I think I'm so bougie. Um, there's definitely people out there that are more bougie than me, but at least I admit it. I mean, I know I'm pretty bougie and I feel like I'm pretty straight up about it. So sorry, not sorry, but I'm kind of a bougie bitch and I kind of like it. So if you have a channel and you have not done this tag yet, uh, go ahead and do it because I would love to hear your answers. And if you have not already checked out Agape Love Girls channel, go ahead and do so as well. So that's going to be it for today's tag video. If you want to see some other tags, you can either click on this one right here or maybe this one. And if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and I will see you in my next one. Bye.